Hi, welcome to Bulletproof Art. I'm Sam, and today we're going to be doing our planning for the month of March. So let's get to it. Before we get started, I'm going to take you through my month of February. I have my sleep and my mood tracker, and my habit tracker. My expense tracker. My brain dump, which is usually where I just journal. The last time I did something in my yoga calendar, a quote on the side, my gratitude log, some random doodles for Valentine's Day, and then our Papermate Flare color palette. Here's my monthly calendar, and then this used to be a food tracker, but then I started pasting in dot paper and creating my own pages. So I wasn't really following along with the food calendar. <laughs> This is a sneak peek of another video, and then now we begin our March planning. I'm going to start off here with my March cover page. Um, I watercolor these, but I'm just going to say that this wasn't my best watercolor painting because I messed it up multiple times. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out, even though there is a few mistakes, so I still put it in my bullet journal anyway because I had fun um, drawing it out and painting it. Embrace your mistakes. That's the, the thing I learned by accepting what happened to my painting and still using it anyway. Because mistakes are going to happen and you can't really avoid them. This is one of the mistakes I made was putting the yellow in between each of the petals. I was drawing it like that and it looked good but as soon as I put it down on the paper it didn't look so great. So I'm not very happy with that but I did it to all of them anyway for consistency. I really liked the little veins of the the plant base though. That was that was a lot of fun to do. And then I added yellow to the side of the stem and it made it look too big and I just and then I tried to do white dots and that didn't work, so I started doing black dots and I realized there was a spot on my paper that was wet and I screwed up this flower clover thing. But that's okay, because it still looks pretty good after all of those mistakes. I go in and write March, give it a little drop shadow and a highlight, and now we can paste it into my journal. I have to use double-sided tape because I ran out of my other sticky stuff. Now I'm doing my sleep tracker, and I'm doing this all on a single page without my mood tracker because I'm doing my mood tracker separately this time. I decided to change it up a little bit. Um, to keep it interesting and to keep myself from not wanting to fill it out because I noticed my last couple journal pages um, for the last two months were a lot similar than they were different. Now we move on to my mood tracker and I decided to do like a graph instead of just smiley faces. So across the top of the page I write out all 31 days and then on the side I have my moods and I use like a 1 to 5 ratio like on a scale of one to five because that it it's less intimidating than writing down a bunch of moods and trying to figure out how I feel that day so I just base it on a scale of one to five and if you've noticed I've been using washi tape that I created myself I found a leaf pattern on Google and I used that to create my own washi tape and it's so cute because it looks like little pieces of ripped out leaves. If you want to see how I did that go ahead and leave a comment down below and I will make a video on that for you guys. Now this part I actually added a picture to the side of mood um, at the end of the video. I didn't film that but it's in the end so just be forewarned. Now I'm going through my expense tracker. This one's pretty basic, pretty the, much the same as all of my other expense trackers. So I'm just going to speed through these lines. I messed a bunch of them up, but that's okay because it's still functional and it still works. I messed up the bottom, so I pasted a little bit of washi tape down there and it seems to do the trick. Across the top of my expense tracker, I have a place for the date, the store that I went to, the items that I got, the cost of how much it was, if it was a add or subtract to my account and then my remaining balance of my account. And then I'm sorry this part got a little bit cut off so it's gonna jump over and you're probably gonna be confused 
but I'm doing my payday trackers now. I had to change this up because Zach got a new job, so he has two jobs now, so I needed two spots to fit both of those jobs. Now I'm just writing down my bills, and then on the bottom, I'm going to be doing a little savings jar. I really like doing the jar because jars are adorable and I love jars and I'm obsessed with jars. But it's also, it's, it's cute. I love it. I put change in jars, so it's a good idea for a savings tracker, I think. Now I'm doing my habit tracker and this also gets cut off and I end up just filling in all the numbers without putting it on the video, so I apologize. If you enjoy people speed painting numbers in a box, then let me know in the comments below so I can leave it in the video for next time. Otherwise, just enjoy. So I'm using a square grid journal, um, so I can't exactly give you dot ratios, but I made sure to leave enough space so that there were seven columns across and six columns down. Seven columns across for the days of the week, which I always start with Sunday because I have OCD and it just looks better to have Sunday and Saturday on opposite sides of the calendar. It really irks me when people put them together. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like to add guidelines when I'm writing my numbers. That way I don't have to worry about missing a space or putting them too close together so that's why I have these pencil lines and I go in and I erase them later so that it looks more crisp and clean. Then I add a drop shadow to each of the boxes and color in the days of the week bar and then I add some washi tape on the top so that I can add in my habits that I want to track. I put down my cute little leafy washi tape that I created and then I have been taking cardstock or not cardstock uh, like paper that you use for scrapbooking and cutting it out to a certain size and then burning the edges and I really like the way this looks I wanted to do it with the pictures that I put in my bullet journal but I didn't attempt that this time but I think I'm gonna do it next time I'm gonna just gonna burn all the pictures that I put in because I like the the rough burnt edges that it gives Last but not least, we have our final flip through of all the trackers and all of the washi tape and all of the fun colors and pictures. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, go ahead and give it a big like, give it some love. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more bullet journal videos and pen testing and things like that. Comment down below of anything that you tried or liked or would like to see a video of in the future. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I love you all. Have a great day. Bye!